Hey guys, this is Ashley, King of Horizon Esports, and I'm joined by Hillisang, the support of Fnatic. After they finally beat G2 Esports on a best of five scenario on one of the final rounds of 2020 LEC Summer Split Playoffs, congratulations! Okay, how are you feeling? I have to start with that. How are you feeling? <laughs> um, oh my god, I think I have so many mixed, mixed feelings right now. First of all, I feel very tired, exhausted. Oh. I think... I think it was very ex exhausting to play five games against G2. Mm. Like there's a lot of pressure and um, like constant hectic and action things happening in the game that you can't really follow too much if you're not focused. And I tried to be like at least half of the games I played. I think I died like many times, but I think I did good. I did I think what I was supposed to do at least four of the games. The Leon game was not so good, but uh, I think it was really hard. They had a lot of pressure, but I'm extremely happy. Mm. I'm very relieved that mm. we managed to win against them because we haven't done that for like quite a few games already, and it started to getting boring to lose against you two. I'm I'm glad we could manage to like beat them. Yeah, because. Before today's series, you know, if you talk to G2 players in many interviews, they sounded very confident talking about the mental edge that G2 has on top of Fnatic. Also, Reckless mentioned on the broadcast, you know, hey, like, you know, maybe there was like, you know, lo lost of confidence going against G2. But how are, st how are you or the team overall feeling as you headed into a series today? Did you feel any different? Like, what did you kind of have the idea that today was going to be the day? Or um, Honestly... Going to G2 games, at least for me, mm. I'm always like less confident in myself and my team because I feel like when we play them, we know that it's a huge game and we always want to prove ourselves to like as individuals at least that we're better than them and we always try to outplay them in lane and whatnot. That actually hurts us more than it helps us, and that this pressure that we we're rivals and we have to like prove that we're the better team, it's actually. I feel like hurts us more than uh, it helps us, and I feel like today we didn't really feel like have this urge to prove that we're the better mm. dual lane and mm. the better top lane and better jungler. We didn't go for the flash, like flash highlights plays, and you know for the montage. Mm. We rather like I think we stayed as a team more, and mm. we did team plays. We tried to involve every member, even if even if. Uh, it's far away from the map. Like even if, if top, uh, like top, for example, was always in, involved in bot plays, and bot was always involved in top plays. And yeah, I think that was the the difference maker, and I think that's why we managed to win because we stick as a team and we didn't really try to prove that we're the better team by playing as an individual, but rather as a team. Because that was the amazing thing about today, right? When it come came to the clutch moments, you know, Fnatic held their ground, but G2 almost looked a bit chased sometimes, for example, in their third game where they had a huge gold lead and pushing into the base with the Rift Herald, like they wanted to finish there and there. And I know we all know that G2 can be over aggressive, but in a way it almost felt uncharacteristic. Did you also feel that way? Um, uncharacteristic, I don't, wouldn't say so because they, mm -hmm. they always like to play fast and like, uh, like go for this type of place and usually it works uh, this time I think we had their number because we knew they couldn't end so we even tried to like overreach a bit because our runner cancelled pace and she was no mana no HP trying to push bot tier 2 and they got baited because our runner is bot without resources let's go end, for, end the game so we kind of baited them and they took the bait and yeah it uh, bited them but uh, I would say that they were like very excited they they really wanted to win, just like us. Usually, when we play against them, like we really want to win right there and then. And then it's just something else happens, and you lose Nash when he's 13 HP, or like he's like so, something else happens, and then the game is in complete um, control of the enemy. So I think that's what happened to them, and uh, I feel like we didn't make that mistake when we were like in the game five. We knew we can end the game right there. We just had to, like, Reckless was the one saying, like, uh, guys, we won't calm down, calm down, we won't. Let's just play around our wave and make sure that we know what is their play rather than what we can do because we knew how to end that game. Mm -hmm. So, Fnatic, 
stayed as a team, you know, they stayed calm and pushed their win conditions. But I also want to praise the performance of the individual players, especially you, Hillisung, because you started playing Nautilus and G2 was like, yeah, we're not dealing with this. They sort of ended out. And then <laughs> everyone was talking about your Leona hex dash jump over the the Tarek stun. Tarek I'm stun. gonna I'm gonna put a clip over here, but I love to hear more about it. Is it like improvised, or did you just know that it was gonna happen? Oh, I honestly I was like, okay, I don't think I can cross this way, yeah. but I'll make them use something at least. Maybe like uh, I think they had a ash arrow. I was oh. thinking like that they maybe arrow and I can like jump on the right side of the wall. Yeah. But then I saw the Tarek stun and I saw like they were collapsing me. So I was like, okay, I can just jump over this because I knew that it was coming because I was like charging my hex slash, hmm. and then I saw the stun and I saw that he was coming towards mm -hmm. me. So I had a one option to jump on the I think the right side, but I think right side was not safe either. So I think my only option was to go on the left side and just hope that I don't get one shot by LeBlanc. And I think Reckless kind of saved me and my teammates. So yeah, props to them because I feel like sometimes. They would just leave me to die there and just say, like, give, 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 push side, push side. And I'll be like, oh, okay. I got the TP from LeBlanc and a bunch of ultimates. <laughs> mm. But today they yeah. came to save you. <laughs> yes, they came to at least make it hard for them to kill me, which I think I lived with one health or something. Yeah. Oh. Like, I see you using Hextech quite often, at least more than, you know, other players. Actually, yeah. I think Hextech Flash is must on support. Oh, right now, yeah. I don't think like the stopwatch is worth because the games usually are like by the time you get your stopwatch, it's already like a lot has could have happened if you had uh, hex slash and hex slash, especially on Thresh and uh, Leona and Nautilus, allows you to go for things that usually you wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. Like you can like dive very well because you can go behind them, or you can even escape because you can go deep ward and then you escape with hex slash. And you can like make a trick, you can make trick in lane, which mm -mm. people don't know. Mm. But I actually don't know if I should re okay, I should just <laughs> review it. Okay, if you have hex slash okay. and you're in lane, yeah. And if enemy is not inside, like they don't have vision on you, mm -hmm. and if you're out of bush in lane, yeah, yeah. and they don't have they don't have range to see you, yeah. If you hex slash in the opposite bush, even if they're minions, they yeah. wouldn't see the animation of hex slash. So they wouldn't know that you're there if they, if the bush is not warded. Mm. So this is something that I love playing, I love doing on trash mm. because it's very deadly and you can get a lot of advantage. Yeah. And also just like hex slash, having hex slash is like it's like you you never save, you never know where support is if he's not in vision. So I love playing with hex slash. Uh, <laughs> people, I think in Korea people do it on set usually and because of Nimbus cloak. Um, but I think Nimbus Cloak and I think one of the innovative users of Hex Splash I've seen is Carrier at DRX using it with Bolivia. So he was hiding behind that crook on that balcony or whatever they call it, and then he was hex splashing. Uh, alcove. Yeah, alcove. Yeah, and then he was hex splashing between the bushes to get the gank. Because like oh, you yeah, said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They, they do it he, sometimes. He runs Nimbus as well. He runs, run, runs Nimbus for oh, sure. Okay. But you can do it if the if there is no bush if if the you know the bush next to the alcove. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is a small bush. If yeah, you, yeah, yeah, if you yeah. alcove hex slash into I, the yeah. bush, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. they wouldn't see the hex slash animation, so um, they wouldn't know that you're you're there. And maybe you can land a hook okay. or like Leona E. Or yeah. Yeah. I used to do it on Dumb as well, but that's uh, that's maybe pushing it. <laughs> yeah. So this was episode fifty-eight on Professor Hillisong's lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for participating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in our next talk in the LEC finals, no, I'm joking. But yeah, today's victory feels so special because, you know, you already qualified for Worlds and like, you know, now you'll be going to LEC finals, but you have defeated G2 and you already told me that, you know, coming into this match, everyone tried to play as a team a bit more. Would you say that this victory could almost be a turning point for Fnatic? Would that be an exaggeration uh, or...? Um, I think beating Rogue, I was already a turning point for me at least. Um. I I realized, like, and maybe even my teammates realized that we are actually made a difference and made a lot of changes and that it's working out even on stage because on scrims, it was always working out. We were always like good teams, like good team in scrims. We were like having very good results, but on stage, like recently mm -hmm. we were like, like underperforming or 
like not playing the same way like in streams. But uh, lately, I think uh, this thing has been changed, and we we're for sure like a better team rather than like what we showed off on the summer split. So and I would say yes. And I know that Reckless has been quite vocal about his desire to be D2, which has been shared by a few of his teammates. Who looked the happiest as you took down the fifth Nexus? Honestly, uh, maybe I was the happiest. Oh. It's, it's a huge desire for me as well to win against them because, mm. it, as I said, it hasn't happened for a while. But I think apart from me, I think Bwipo and Reckless were both like very, 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 very happy. Mm. Uh, I think Tim, honestly, I think he was very happy inside. He didn't really show it. Uh, we kind of had to go and hug him because he was on the chair. He was like, ah, another game, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he was extremely happy as well. And Oscar, Oscar, I mean, he kind of played it like Tim, you know, like uh, he was on the chair and he was just like happy. He was like, oh my God, what, what was that? You know, guys, like you guys are extremely happy, but uh, it was more than just a win. It was just, for me at least, it was something that I really wanted to do and it failed so many times and finally achieving that, even though we can play them again and we might lose to them, it feels like... Uh, a proof that they're actually beatable in best of five and I'm happy with the team to show show it yeah okay um thank you so much for this interview and once again congratulations so much for beating G2 and thank you so much for giving us a great series um so there is still that grand final for the summer split waiting for you and now that you have already achieve the feat of beating G2, that will be the next goal to win the LEC. So what is the one thing that you can take from today to finals that will allow Fnatic to win the 2020 LEC Summer Split? I think um, that's a hard question. It's a good question. Oh, okay. I think, I think um, something that came up to mind is that we didn't really play well around Harold, I think. They outperformed us. I think we kind of forgot how to play around Harold. Another thing is, like, I feel like they had a lot of mid-jungle pressure and we were kind of struggling on both sides. I feel like these two things uh, we should work on and like try to improve or like at least know what to do when we can't get mid-jungle and we we are like struggling on site, what is the next step to do? Because I felt like in these games, we were kind of improvising and didn't really know how to deal with it rather than hope to not die and just farm every CS as if we can, because I feel like they were like freezing a lot mm -hmm. and they were like denying us a lot. And then mid jungle was always like hovering and getting Drake's, Heralds. It was really hard to play some mm -hmm. games at least. So I, I think those two things taking like I would fix for, uh, for finals. And they'll win you the finals? Uh, <laughs> I mean, for sure. I think if we play like this, like mm -hmm. we do like nowadays, and we fix some of those little problems that I think we have, I think for sure we have a good shot. I think we proved it today. So I don't know. I wouldn't say we would win it, but we have a good shot. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> we will look forward to that series. Again, thank you so much for the great series and the interview. And I'll see you soon, Professor Hellasung. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank I'll you. let you go. Bye-bye. Thank you.